Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott and I'm here today to give you what will probably be the first of a couple of tutorials for some of the new uh, killer features in Luminar 4. Luminar 4, or Luminar I should say in general, has been a company that has been steadily rising in popularity because they are they're pretty invested in updating and improving their software and of course give an alternative to those that don't like the Adobe subscription model and so they've grown in popularity because of that. There are a couple of new features and one in particular that I want to highlight today that make Luminar 4 much more interesting to me than even what uh, previous versions of it have been and I want to demonstrate to you why I think that the new um, AI sky replacement feature may be a killer app for Luminar 4 particularly if you're into shooting either landscape not of course not just landscape photography but it's useful for that I'll also demonstrate how it's useful for portrait photography as well to really give you an opportunity to kick up images into a, another level. Now, I will preface this by saying I recognize that uh, different photographers have different policies when it comes to how much they're willing to tweak an image. And I, uh, most of you that are familiar with my own shooting style, know that by and large I like to stay you know, pretty true to, you know, kind of pure, what might be known as pure photography. So what I'm about to demonstrate to you kind of goes outside of that. You're in the process of replacing a sky. You're certainly making a major alteration to an image. But I'm here to demonstrate how that there are times when that can make a significant improvement to a final product and make a very believable end result that people will enjoy looking at. So let's jump in and let's take a look at this new killer app in Luminar 4. So let's take a look at the new Luminar 4. So we can see that definitely uh, software run times have improved and, and so you'll load right now into the library module page and certainly they now have a more you know thorough library module that gives you more control over all of those things. But of course the magic happens in the edit area where they now have a, a cleaner still um, arrangement of all of the different tools and um, uh, really kind of tool sets that you can access and uh, you know all of these have drop down um, areas where you can work um, under each one of these but today I want to highlight what is my favorite feature to do that we're going to actually go out of Luminar and launch it more as a plugin now your mileage may vary as to your preferred approach this is still mine at this point I have a lot of years invested in my Adobe libraries and so we'll launch from there it's easy to access it as a plugin just edit in Luminar 4 so here in Luminar the thing that I want to highlight is the AI sky replacement which is really really cool and so what we've got here is the option to access a number of their own plugins and so it's easy to um, you know in Photoshop if you know what you're doing to replace a sky you can go through and you can do all of the masking but what's incredible is all of this is running underneath the hood but at the same time it's also there with a lot of different options on how to access it but what we can see here is that the basic amount of masking is actually being done in a really effective fashion and so um, you can quickly play around with you know different skies that you might want to um, work into it um, you know that all and it's doing a lot of subtle tweaks to the image itself to make it work with that Now, one of the things that I like is that you can actually access your own um, files as well and so in this case for example like I will you know periodically shoot specifically for this kind of thing um, you know more for using in Photoshop but what you can see here is it's done the same kind of work with my own um, image here and so you can go on beyond that there's a lot of different options we're going to explore a little bit more in just a second but first of all you can see how easy it is to load even your own sky texture so after some tweaking in a Luminar to uh, get everything here, this is the final image that I came up with. And so you can see how that we've got a dynamic image that has a whole lot more going on in the sky than what the original did. But it's done in a clean and subtle fashion that works with the actual photo. So just going back for a second, let's just highlight here. 
the difference from what we started off with, which is a you know sky without a lot of a lot of character. Then we've gone to the sky here that helps to highlight the which really the shot was all about this patch of light hitting here. And so now I've got a sky that complements that and got a great look. So here we've got a portrait shot, and so in this case, let's say that I'm going to just load a you know, some, let's try some of the different sky images here. So that, you know, our original sky is a little bit boring. And so, you know, in this case, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, kind of some color overlap. I like to actually start off with an image that hasn't had a lot of editing. And I'll, I'll show you why here in just a second. So here we've added uh, one of my own custom ones here. And so it's, you know, it's a little bit bold. You have some options here for where your blending point is going to be. And so moving these around can help you sometimes to get a little bit of a cleaner masking, depending on what you want to do. You also have the option of how you're going to impact the actual scene in terms of the lighting. But in this case, we've got a little bit of shading on the face. But reason why I like to, um, to work like this is that I'm going to go ahead and apply this and I like to use this as a plugin because then I can do some other tweaks to this image to get the end result that I want. Now back here in Lightroom, what I've done is I have done a little further tweaking in terms of adding a preset to the overall look. I've warmed the image back up and so now we have you know, we have good restored skin tones on the subject, but we've got a much more interesting sky than when we started off with this image. Got a lot more going on. Let's take a look at the image globally here. And so what we can see is that by using the sky replacement, we've got a nice, cool, clean look. And also we've got a cool end product here with a much more visually interesting sky. So let's take a look at another landscape image. And so we'll uh, take that into, um, into Luminar 4 and take a peek at it. Now here you can play around with uh, some of the different looks. One thing I do want to point out is that not every um, every look is going to work with every kind of image. And so I think it's, it's wise to, uh, for one thing, to shoot some of your own and to get some sky textures to work with. In this case, I think that color palette, it kind of is complementary. You also need to be aware of the lighting, whether or not it's going to be a credible in result, but you can find something that works quite nicely. And again, what we can see if we look in at a pixel level is that the masking is really being done on a you know quite a fantastically high level. So you can see after I did a little bit more tweaking, I actually um, added in some of the the birds to the background just to give it a little bit more of a vibrant feel. But what we can see is that we have got tons of detail and a very nice uh, seaming in of the sky. The end result is we've got a, a beautiful looking image. So again, let's compare the before and the after. And so, you know, this is the original image and we have a much more visually interesting end result. We'll take a look at one final shot. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this portrait shot and I wanna highlight one other really important detail to you as a part of this. Now, I do wanna point out that this is my preferred way to use this new feature, to go into it fairly flat and then to do any kind of further post-process editing after the fact. And so let's take a look here in Luminar. Okay, so if I go into the sky replacement, I'm going to select the Dramatic Sky 1 here. And so you can see, um, you know, we've got it seamed in. Now we've got one problem, and that is that if you'll see here, we're, this shot is shot at f1.4, so we've got a really shallow depth of field. So you've got trees out of focus. It's not credible for the sky to be sharply in focus when your foreground is what should be in focus. So what is very, very cool about this is that under the advanced settings, you actually have a slider called sky defocus. And the great thing about this is that it's taking that mask and then allowing basically, you know, bringing in basically some Gaussian blur to it. And so you can play with that a little bit until you get what is an appropriate match for the actual depth of field of your image. Now this is a really clever feature because it allows you to actually create the kind of result that you actually want. And so in these sliders, there's a lot of other ways to tweak here. Then you could, you know, of course, you could play around with some other uh, features as well. Um, you could add in, let's take a look here. We could add in some sun rays, you know. Now, obviously, that's way, way overkill. So, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna play with it, you're going to tweak it, but you have options of other things that you can incorporate, other elements you can um, work into this to make for a really unique result. 
So you'll find that what I've done is that I've waited until I got back into my editing software to um, then add in kind of some color effects. And so that allows everything to blend in together and I've done my final processing. And so I end up with a much more, you know, visually interesting image here that, you know, I've preserved, you know, the intent of my image, but I've also added in a much more interesting sky. So for a lot of reasons and a lot of shots, this is a feature which I would call a killer app for Luminar 4 and is a reason worth buying it. So as you can see, um, I think that the results speak for themselves. I'm very impressed by both how quickly and how cleanly the masking is done underneath the hood and uh, the ability to then have a lot of finite control over how the sky additions are handled in terms of the lighting and the focus, etc. It really gives you a lot of control and the ability to do something that, sure, I do know how to do in Photoshop. The ability to do it much more quickly is something that I personally will be making use of in those images that I want to give just a little bit of extra to. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you will look um, into the description down below and look on screen at the moment, there is a, an address where you can go and check out um, Luminar 4 for yourself. Right now, we're still at the pre-order stage at the time of this review, but you can go ahead and put in a pre-order at a discounted price. And uh, then if you're watching this at a later date, if you will use the code DUSTINHDR, it will help to give you some money off of the software to make it more affordable for you. So take a look at that. You'll also find that linkage right down in the description below. And so you can check that out as well. Um, there's also linkage there to follow me on social media uh, to become a patron or to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.